On today's show, Google holds their annual science fair. Controlling a game by putting your iPhone in an IKEA thing. And an open source robot who's ready to be your friend. I need one. Not your friend. Oh. It's tomorrow daily. Greetings, citizens of the internet. Welcome to Tomorrow Daily, the best geek talk show in the known universe. I'm your host, Ashley Skella. It's Monday, so we're punching the sky, of course. Yeah, you gotta you gotta punch a little on Monday. You gotta punch the sky on Monday. And uh, joining me as always, Kale Anonymous. Yeah, it's good. It's good to be back. I say that every episode. You do. It's just it's so good to be back. At some point, <laughs> like we're gonna act like time. you have been not not been here no. for like a month. You're like, oh my god! And I should have like a giant beard. I brought in Hypnotoad today, though. I know. I just, all hail. Well, we're trying to I bring in toad. some stuff so that we have a little bit of a. I might bring my. Set. I might bring my robot or a portal gun tomorrow. Oh, that would be amazing. A little mini portal. Yeah, gun. and I should bring. I could leave my hoverboard here. It's just gonna be, be. It's just gonna turn into our bedroom. I know. Yeah, we're just turning it into just like a little office. Here. Too bad. Um, well, we got some news stories to talk about, so let's hit the headlines. <laughs> I gotta turn that down. Wow, that was so loud in my ear. You don't like guitar riffs? <laughs> no, not not that loud. Okay. Um, I'm an old woman. It's too hard for me. Uh, so Google, Google had a science fair. Did you know they do this every year? I had no idea that they had a science fair. No. Yeah, this is awesome. So Google has a science fair that they hold every year for teenagers all around the world uh, to participate in. Here's the here's the website here. They have a gorgeous website. If you want to go check that out, you can go to googlesciencefair.com. Um, and so every year they look at entrants from all around the globe and then they fly in uh, finalists and then the finalists compete for fabulous prizes, not unlike the prices, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but instead of guessing uh, prices of things like groceries, these teenagers are incredible human beings who have come up with insane ideas that are just... I, I, incre I, they're incredible. I mean, there's really no other way. But they're like remarkable children. Next level science fair, but still for teens. Yeah, okay. yeah. So uh, 18 finalists this year showed off their projects. The grand prize winners were a trio of girls from Ireland uh, named Ciara Judge, Emer Hickey, and Sophie Hiltithau. And they found a way to use soil bacteria to speed up germination of cereal seeds. So here are, here are the girls like showing off their project. So this is pretty cool. So they're showing off, like, I think this is what maybe what they submitted to Google. Uh, so they show off this. And the, the point of this project is that it makes the crop, the cereal seeds, less vulnerable to weather, to extreme weather. Because if it germinates 50% faster, you can obviously harvest it faster. So then in addition to that, it would increase crop yields, of course, if you could make it germinate faster. So this might someday contribute to helping fight global hunger. Are all of the science fair projects this incredible yes. and life changing to the they, society? I mean, they are they are really again remarkable people who have put together these projects. You these teenagers are unreal. And how many how many years have, has this been happening? Uh, I think it's been a few years that they've been doing this, so it's okay. been a while. They like I think when they first started it, it was pretty small, where they had it looked like a normal like gym science fair, <laughs> but it's at Google's campus. Yeah. And now there's you know banners that show off each of the you know, finalists and who they are and what their project is, and it's all very polished. And it sounds like they're coming from all over the world, too. They are. There's uh, There were entrants from India, Ireland. I mean, obviously, the grand prize winners are from Ireland. I mean, they're everywhere, including here in the States. And some of the stuff they came up with was so good. Uh, one kid came up with a drone evasion system. So he saw a bunch of fruit flies in his house. And notice when he puts the paper next to it as if to swat this little flying robot, it flies away. And so he saw fruit flies in his house and was inspired to make this sort of software, an evasion software that keeps drones or flying robots from colliding into moving and non-moving objects. Pretty amazing stuff. Kid, how old was that kid? I think he's like 15, 14. That's I mean, incredible. What are we, first of all, what are we doing with our lives? <laughs> I feel like such <laughs> an abject daily. That's what failure. We're doing. I know. Yeah, I know. Um, and then also uh, another finalist uh, that I was really impressed with was a girl who created software to combat cyberbullying. So she worked on a thing that gives you a notification before you post a really horrible comment uh, that says, "Are you sure you want to do that?" Because you know cyberbullying is really terrible. And apparently, she saw uh, some really good results with that. People actually took a second to think about whether or not they wanted to post a comment, and it's so great. I I'm love glad. Stuff like I'm this. glad you picked 
us to do this story because I think this kind of thing needs to like get more attention. I agree. I agree. I think everybody should be really excited about this. You know, people get really jazzed up about the National Spelling Bee. I feel like we should get really jazzed up about Google Science Fair. That's way better than knowing that you spell elephant yeah. with two Ps, you know? Yeah, obviously. <laughs> no, but it's, 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 it's way better. Like, this is, this is cool. Super duper cool. It's so cool. Yeah. So, um, but I wonder what the loser, like what the losing project was. I mean, even the, la even the 18th place, like I don't think they placed them like that, but even the person who got the least amount of attention is still getting insane amounts of attention for a great project. So, I mean, you can't lose. Very cool. If you're a finalist in the Google Science Fair, you, you really have won at yeah, that point. Yeah, you won already. Doesn't it's like, matter it's, it's like, like being nominated for an Oscar. You just, oh, I just an honor to be nominated. Just, just, I mean, I'm not to extend this part, but did you, what did you do for your science fair? I don't, oh God, I'm sure I did something with potatoes or like growing an avocado in a jar or something. I don't know. Oh. Something, something terrible. Uh, mine I'm was sure. with mold. I was trying to find out how to preserve be uh, bread the best, oh. and so I had like a whole different ways. Different ways. I like it. It was almost very MythBusters. Like, what's the best way to? Yep. I like it. Was it was my mom. She's like, you know, if you do this, I'm like, I'm gonna find out. I'm okay. gonna find out if you're wrong. By the way, I she like was it. right. She was right. Yeah, she wins. Moms tend to be right. Yeah, All right. Give right. me, give me the IKEA story. Okay. So you know. Our phones are really powerful, but there's still ways that we're not tapping into it, such That's as true. the gyroscope. There's a lot you can do with that. Well, this gentleman found a way to use IKEA products as a controller for different games. That's crazy. Yes. Uh, so Marc Dubois of the Swiss University, uh, ECAL, uh, uses IKEA things uh, to uh, as it's controllers. It's the blendable. Yeah, the blendable. The solvent sun. So super cheap IKEA Hyperbox. stuff. You uh, you put your iPhone in there, and uh, it does different things. So there's uh, so there's three different things that he uses. Okay. One is a ball. It uses a gyroscope, and you you roll that around, and inside this 3D space, it recognizes which directions you're rolling. Oh, that's the ball. great. Okay, wait. So it has the ball, and then it also has these. Uh, I I know these because I have these these cork like pot yeah, trivets keep, to keep it in place. I see. So you'll see as he's rolling it, it's noticing where it's going in 3D space oh, because of the gyroscope. Interesting. Uh, he also has a cube one that uses the gyroscope, and you roll that through a virtual maze. It's oh. not that much different than the than the ball, but the cube creates a different sort of feel for the control. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, that's the one you're gonna see last on this video. And then the second one that he shows off is a lamp, and you, you put it on the lamp, uh, no, you put the lamp, you, I'm sorry, you put the phone inside of this cue, this cone, and the lamp uses the camera to recognize where it is. Oh, where the light is coming yeah. from, I see. And so you maneuver oh. it around and you play this game with it. Wow, that's cool. So the, yeah, there you go, three different three different ways to use uh, the, the iPhone as a controller. That's really and interesting. It's really cheap. You just get the iPhone thing. Apparently. And your little and your blendable. Yeah, the, your blendable. You have to be near an IKEA though. That's the thing. Otherwise, because yeah. some IKEAs can are kind of far. Can you order offline? I think you can. Just the Swedish. I think you can order balls. some stuff online. But uh, yeah, That's there you go. Neat. It's pretty pretty simple. I wonder how this will be applied. I mean, if I. It, I like seeing these sort of things that may not actually make it to obviously that like consumer product, but. At some point, somebody might be inspired by this to make something really cool for gaming. Right, like so a really poke, like you can do a Pokeball type thing oh, or, Pokeball, like or something. I don't know. I don't know. Something something weird. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I like that it's the uh, the IKEA thing. So. I, that is really neat. So it's something that you can find off the shelf. It's pretty cool. Okay. So our last story today comes from Tross and Robotics. Uh, I'm going to introduce you to Jimmy. Jimmy is their newest robot. This is HROS5. He is, it's like, it's like Jimmy Five. Can we call him Jimmy Five instead Jimmy of Johnny Five? five yep. Instead of Johnny Five? Um, Input. So here he is. He is 27 inches high. So he's pretty tall. He's over two feet tall and he weighs 13 pounds. He's pretty heavy for a yeah. little robot. And he is the brainchild of Intel's futurist, Brian David Johnson, which how would you like to have the title futurist? I would, I'm a futurist. Mm -hmm, I'd wear weird clothing. I would be, yeah. Well, you'd wear, yeah, really so super weird. Jimmy's a clothing. heavy little guy. He's a heavy little robot. Uh, but here's the cool thing. So they're hoping that this robot in particular uh, helps people develop robotics quickly, uh, at, quicker than before. And here's why. It has the Intel Edison chip inside. We talked about this um, the other day, the Intel Edison chip. And it's a Core i5 processor. And you can develop stuff for this robot on a full Ubuntu operating system. And since, and here's the cool part, since there's a full computer inside this robot with the Intel Edison chip, 
if there's something wrong with it, you can plug it directly into a monitor. It has HDMI out. You oh my God. Plug it directly into a monitor. It has USB 3.0, Wi Fi, Bluetooth, HDMI, a whole bunch of other features. You can plug it directly into a monitor and see exactly where your code went wrong. Wow. Pretty cool. So anybody can just like you can tap compile into this code robot. directly to the robot, which is pretty neat. Oh, wow. That's I really like cool. that. So it's, How much is it? It's really expensive. Uh, it is $16,000. But as all things, I mean, look at all of the curved TVs. We're starting to see them become more affordable, right? right. So over time, so we'll all be able a couple to years, a maybe we'll all be able to get a little robot. Have they pre programmed it to do anything besides do that weird little stomp thing it was doing? Can we? Well, they want to have it have like social interactions. It has speakers on it, so you can have it talk and stuff. Mm. But this is my favorite thing that it's done. It walked another robot. Oh, <laughs> that's really scary. He took a little spider robot for a walk. It's adorable. Look oh, at him go. Oh, man. I'm just seeing, like, I'm just seeing uh, the, the terror. Yeah, I know, the so... terror. You can see where this is going to go. But I, the one thing I really like about this, I, for me, is that you can, there's your choice. It's, they're all custom order. So you have your choice of these 3D printed shells. So you can make that robot look almost like however you would want. Wow. Which is kind of So, neat. yeah, scary. It's scary, but I really like that. And he's real cute. And I just, you know, where's $16,000 when you need it? Maybe it's a tax write off. Would they, do you think that would count as a tax write off for us? Yeah, you got to have a robot. Or just like pony think, up 16 grand and just like, tell, like convince the yeah. IRS, be like, we really needed this robot for our show. Get, just well, like have him back. Oh, there. you want one for yourself? Yeah. And then it can host the show instead of me, and it would be way better. Well, it wouldn't eat as much pizza. That's true, unless we Cost programmed it to do to, to do to that. Eat pizza. No, but yeah. I think I, I think like they could get these for schools. I and mean, you know how you oh, have to yeah. like, take universities. Care of an egg, oh, like you take care egg, of a little robot baby. An egg or a bag of flour or whatever. Yeah, you you have to take robot it. baby cries. Baby cries. Oh, I don't like yeah, that. Yeah, no, you got to reprogram. Well, they have to... those ones that are like really realistic. Have you oh, seen those? Oh, the baby those? things. Yeah, they're creepy. They're, they're like, like real creepy stuff. babies that cry in the middle of the night and they look real. They're terrifying. I think my sister. That's what kids are like anyway these days. Well, that's what they're always like. Yeah, they cry. Kids do that. Um, but if you want to check it out, you can go over to Trust and Robotics. Uh, they have a whole bunch of info and video, and it's it's really fascinating stuff. I really like it. Cool. All right, you ready to take a quick break? We're going to take a quick break. We're going to be back with Back It or Hack It. Oh, yeah. We got a good one. I'm going to uh, hack it. We're going to, okay, we're going to, we got a good one for those of us who sit all day long at our computers, which is pretty much everybody who is watching the show, including us. You. And, uh, and we, of course, have your user feedback and our phone tagger for the day, so don't click away. Welcome back to the show. We've returned. Are you spying on my screen? Are you getting text? Would you like to know what the next segment is? Yeah, I want to get It's Back It or Hack It. All right, get your hatchet out. Get ready for Back It or I feel like we, we should hatch it. What are we thinking? You um, vote like you vote, and I'm like, and you know back what? It. We're, We're gonna like go get. You know it. what? We can totally go get them right now because it's, it's Halloween. Halloween. I know. Oh man, we just came. We up are with the smartest people in this studio right now. Right there's, now, there's this, only two. One hundred percent, the smartest two people in this studio. Um, so this is called Dharma, and uh, it is a smart seat cushion. So we sit a lot. Mm -hmm. And some people have gone so far as to say that sitting is the new smoking. It's that bad for you. Oh, it's pretty bad for you. All right. And also, you know, you have what we call like computer shoulders where oh. you like roll over and you're typing and stuff. I right. do that. I'm, I'm guilty of that. We all are slouchers. Yeah, we always try and create different devices to make so we Chairs, like sit right. They got right. the ball. The, the back, the lumbar support standing thing. Standing desk. The standing desk. Okay, all right, so, this so is, how are we going to fix it? This is Dharma. This is a smart seat cushion that monitors your posture as you're sitting in your chair. Uh, it also monitors your your sitting habits, your stress levels, and it all and it helps you to sit up better. So this is what they say on their Kickstarter. It helps people from being too sedentary. There's an app attached to it. You can see that right here on the screen. The app will give you an alert if you are sitting inappropriately. So if it realizes you're leaning forward too much, it'll say, hey, you got to you gotta sit up straight, like lean back, sit up straight. Or it'll tell you, hey, you've been sitting for a really long time. You need to stand up and take a break. Uh, so this is a really nice, I like this device to sort of remind you uh, when you need to get up. And the other thing is, is it, it looks at exactly how you sit and it comes up with a customized schedule of stretching exercises for your particular problems when you Ooh. sit. 
So that's really helpful. It monitors you your heart that? rate. Yeah, I know. I know. He His got heart rate went up because this girl in green Because like, the, the cute girl in green walked by. Because this Velma over here. They, oh, she's such a Velma, yeah, right? Yeah, she's a Velma. So um, it uses a whole bunch of sensors and algorithms. And it. the one thing I like is that it not only monitors your posture, it monitors your stress levels. So if he notices your heart rate <gasps> goes up. Um, oh no, she dropped her glasses. No, there's the some worst. flirtation going on. Look, what is this? Sorry, what is it? What is this turned into? This video turned into a crazy thing all of a sudden. It turned into a dating video. What the? That was all weird. Right. All right. Anyway, so Dharma is their, it's the sit smart is their tagline. And okay, so here's the price. The super early bird is already sold out, 99 bucks. The retail is going to be 200 bucks. Why? Well, it's smart. It's a smart thing. Yeah, so but the hundred dollars would sell tons. Well, it's already sold out. So that's the super early bird is already sold out. Yeah, so, but, but I'm saying but that now, the hundred dollar uh, like tag tag oh, is I like perfect. Oh, I think it would perfect. sell very well. I I think one forty nine would be a more appropriate price for this. But um, it's one twenty nine right now in the Kickstarter. That's the level that's available. So they're saying like if you back it during the Kickstarter, I think the highest like amount you'd pay after early bird is like one forty nine or one seventy nine. But it's okay. not full retail. Like it's it's like twenty to forty bucks off full retail, or okay. or sixty if you get in at like one twenty nine. But it's uh, I mean, I think this is really interesting. It's, so you're we all sit all day. I say I say back in. Okay. I mean, I say get in. I say get in early though, because I think one twenty nine is an appropriate price. Yeah. 200 is not. I don't know that I get it at 200. 200 is like Brookstone stuff. Like, yeah, it's yeah, like, it's like something you'd see at, at the Sharper Image. Yeah, it's like my <laughs> like my grandfather bought it. Like, oh, I'm going to use this new tech. It's going to make me yeah. sit better. And then it just ends in his closet. What do you say? But I say back it. You're in two? I love it. No, what I think they should do is I think a company should buy it for all their employees. Give, it a, give them I an option agree. to use it, right? For ergonomics. Like, I think this is real good. At, at CNET up in San Francisco, you have, uh, when you start working there, they have an ergonomics person come and help you, like, set up your desk and everything, make sure your monitor at the proper height and everything it's really nice yeah I, I would say like don't go so aggressive with it like be like but hey just, it's available we have to you. this yeah. if you'd like to do it I, again the stretches thing kind of turns me off like uh, like I'm gonna sit in this chair I but don't here's the thing stretches. so my my husband has a uh, really bad sciatica mm -hmm. so when he sits for a long time he has to do stretches and so it's like it's a good reminder for people with really severe back problems to stretch and do proper stretching yeah, so that's good. I, I feel like uh, you're absolutely right at what you start, said at the beginning. We sit in the chair all the time. We're sitting between, right now. Between that and how much we look at screens, solving that issue is only going to make things better. Yeah, I need everybody. some smart contacts that force my eyes to blink while I look at a computer screen. You, well, hey, what about the um, the gunners? <laughs> yeah, well, I have. Okay, so I have a pair of those, but I like I just want smart contacts that like ping me and be like, your eyes are literally drying out like a lake bed in July. Mm -hmm. Like, you need like to that. blink. You need to blink. I don't care what number greater rift you're on in Diablo 3. Blink, <laughs> woman. Blink. So, you just have it blow air at you every now and again? No, just like add, like maybe it just secretes a little bit of like saline solution into my eye. You got a real problem. I do. Actually, I, I don't blink off the, it's weird. I don't blink. You're, yeah. I blink like when I'm talking on the show, but when I'm playing video games on PC, especially, I, I tend not to blink. It's, and it makes my eyes really dry. I'm back. I'm back. Whatever you need to fix that. All right, back that. some contact. All right, good. But yeah, but I think that's. I think it's back it. Right? All right, yeah, all right. we're in. Double back. back. Cool. No send hacks. Send it. Send us one though. Send, I keep saying that after all of these because I want to try it. I want to see. You know. I know. I want to try it out really bad. One twenty. Um, I may get that. Well, maybe when it comes out for retail, we can get a review unit and then we can send it back when we're done checking it out. All right. So it is time now, of course, for my favorite part of the show: your user feedback. <laughs> I like that 70s. I like that 70s that bass vibe. groove. Yeah, we got we got to get a dance party going. Uh, yesterday, er, yesterday, last week, we asked you guys to use the hashtag TDScary and tell us what scary experience you would want to uh, check out because we talked about the zombie train. I said Dead Space, and you said Metroid. Metroid. Okay. Shoot space. Balance. All right. What do we got? Uh, so Nathan wrote to us on Twitter. I said bonus points for Photoshop too, and he said, "What's scarier than floating off in space? <gasps> I'd experience a simulation of the movie Gravity, and that's my face inside oh, the uh, space." Oh, that's suit. your face. That's my face. Oh my God, that's great. There's me floating away in bonus space. Bonus points, uh, Nathan. You get. 14.7 points. Yes, 14.7. Not 14.8, though. He's he's absolutely right. There is nothing scarier than space. That's like that open water fear, where it's like ocean. you just... O all those open things. Ocean Yeah, open and space. space. Yeah, it's really scary. No good. Uh, okay, so beyond the TD scary, we got this email, and I just 
had to read it on air because I thought it was really good. Remember when we talked about soft robots and how Harvard made that toolkit so that people could build their own things and we said everyone should give us your ideas because we couldn't think up a whole lot of them? Yeah. Okay, well, one of our viewers, Pin, wrote to us and he writes a lot of really good emails. You guys, they're really long and awesome. He comes up with all kinds of great ideas. Said, since you guys were having trouble coming up with applications for soft robots, I started thinking and came up with this list so far. Number one, soft robot mattress. That oh, so it like adjusts itself yeah. as you roll from laying on your back to on your side or to on your stomach and dumps you out of bed when the alarm goes off. For a bedridden patient, it would roll you over on a timer so that you can get bed sores. <gasps> Genius. Wow. Number two, soft robot easy chair. Uh, cushions for helping elderly people get up and out of a chair. Genius. Wow. Number three, smart boyfriend pillow that cuddles you. No, oh, pin one. Like that. Way to go. Number four, soft robot stuffed animals for children. So number five, a soft robot gurney that would automatically adjust itself based on location of patient's injury and require extra support. And lastly, a soft fl robot flotation device that automatically deploys and stows itself when rescue is complete. Wow. All brilliant. All brilliant, see? You guys are the best. Can we get Pin a show? Uh, we sh really should just have Pin on Skype every yeah. week, just give us some ideas. Pin chat. He had another really good idea with the, um, the giant screen, the flexible screen on your wrist. He was saying that it would be awesome if there was an every place you interfaced with it had their operating system on it. So it's like you walked up and synced it, and it would have like that contextually based OS on your wrist. Genius. We could call the show it would Pin be Daily. Like whatever Pin's interested in. It Pin would call to it, it Pinterest. Pinterest. Oh, I like it. Pinterests. We're terrible people. Uh, let's talk about the hashtag of the day. So the hashtag of the day today is TDOS5 for our friend Jimmy5 the robot. Okay, for Jimmy, and yeah. And we want to know what you would make your HROS5 robot look like if you could make it look like anything. Oh, yeah. All right. I think I could get into that. <laughs> like a Ryan Gosling one just going, just hey girl, staring at your face. <laughs> just like Ryan Gosling goes around and just compliments you. Yeah. Hey girl, hey, hey girl, you're looking great today. <laughs> I think it's pretty good. Uh, I, could I think sell a, a producer lot of Logan those. one would be pretty good. I think a producer Logan robot would be pretty nice. You worried about that? Yeah, he, okay, said, he said he's worried about losing his job. So. Oh, that's true. We would fire you. All right, um, producer Logan, let's hit for photographer of the day. You know, I'm really hoping that people can actually hear producer Logan in our mics. I don't know if they can. But... I want I want that to happen so bad because he has like a really bad speaker like a, and it would be perfect. It sounds like a fast food ordering, a really broken fast food. I wish we could I wish we could get a voice modulator so he sounds like Bane. <laughs> that would be amazing. I feel like we're about to transition to photographer. <laughs> All right, let's just do the photographer. Take back your city, <laughs> All right, uh, photographer of the day today is Clint. He says, I'm a big fan of the show. In the link below, you can find a photo taken by my iPhone 5S last April. It is called uh, Ramla Ilhamra, which means the beach with red sand. It is located on a tiny island called Gozo in the Maltese Islands in the center of the Mediterranean. P.S. You should visit in the summer. So I love nice. it. Yeah, I love it. I, wanna, I wish I could see more of the ocean, though. You wish you could see a little more of the ocean? Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Fair enough. Fair enough. Great photographer. Super Wait, what was good. it? What did he use again? iPhone 5S. Okay. Pretty, I mean. Man, that still. seems to be the one that's killing it. Well, you know, you see on like Flickr and stuff, the trend, is, there's a lot of iPhone people taking pictures, a lot of people owning iPhones. But we see a lot of Galaxy devices. Every now and again, we get a Blackberry. Every now and again, we get a Lumia. Like, Lumia takes oh, great yeah, pictures. Oh, yeah, Lumia. Um, got a great lens. Great lenses. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's uh, that's your phone photographer of the day. If you would like to be considered for phone photographer of the day, send a link to your picture to tomorrow at cnet.com. If you want to talk about anything else, you want to send us some photoshops, send us a link to your photoshops. I would love to see some people do some uh, horror phone some Halloween. Yeah, Halloween themed. Phone photography. Yeah, it's October. Give us so some, some uh, scary those, stuff. Like a haunted house or, or like, pumpkins or, or some really well lit. A like, ghost. A, Maybe yeah. you photographed a ghost. Hey, picture taking, sending those ghost selfies. Taking ghosts. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Take some ghost selfies, whatever. Um, but yeah, you can send us that. You can send us your comments, criticism, whatever you want. Yeah, hate mail. Hate mail. Kale gets it all the time. I love it. Yeah. Kale, hashtag yeah. Kale Phil. Yeah, that's what. <laughs> hashtag <laughs> Kale Phil. Oh um, man, we're trending all over the world. Trending topic just about every day of the week. Uh, and so you can always do that. If you want to find us on social media, you can find us at Tomorrow Daily on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Tomorrow Daily TV on Google Plus. 
Kill, um, would you like to tell the nice people who are watching the show where to find you on the internet? The, where to find not nice me? Uh, YouTube.com slash Kale Anonymous. And I just do things. Just unlimited Kale Fail. Unlimited Kale Fail. Just, uh, just all day click, long. Click through. I got playlists of Kale Fail yeah. all over the place. Just literally start start the channel and just tell it to play through the entire channel. <laughs> just kale Fail all day long. Uh, that's it for us here at Tomorrow Daily. We'll be back tomorrow with a brand new show. Um, and uh, until then, be good humans, and we'll see you then. Bye.